I've often thought when looking at uh, mid 1890s fashion plates that some sort of hoop skirt would be very, very useful in creating that classic 1890s trapezoidal silhouette. But I've always kind of just thought to myself, well, hoop skirts weren't worn in the 1890s, we all know that, and you know, these are drawings, so they're clearly stylized, and skirts wouldn't have actually looked like this in the 1890s, and I've just kind of moved on with my life. But I was on Instagram recently, and I saw a video from Nikita Ivanovsky, I'll link him down below, of somebody getting dressed in an 1898 a ball gown and it included a hoop skirt so that really piqued my interest because that had been something that had been kind of hovering around in the back of my mind for a long time so i uh, left a comment asking about hoop skirts in the 1890s and i was directed to the anton primac collection on instagram another fabulous instagram page and i'll link that down below as well and i sent him a message and just asked, you know, do you have any any evidence for 1890s hoop skirts? I'm very, very interested in that. And he sent me a wealth of information. This is a patent that was filed in 1896 for a hooped petticoat. So it's basically a petty, like a normal petticoat, but it has some wire in the hem. So kind of a type of hoop skirt. He also sent me these pictures of these kind of more minimal hoop skirts. They're not, they're not quite what you think of when you think of like a when you, for me, when I think of a hoop skirt, I think of like the very bell-shaped contraption of the 1850s and 60s. These aren't that. They're a much more modest kind of contraption. But you can see how they'd be very, very useful in creating the fashionable silhouette. He also sent me this picture of this woman, which I absolutely adore because you can very clearly see that she's wearing a horseshoe-shaped hoop skirt. You can see her skirt is very flat in the front and very kind of puffed out in the back and I would date this picture from 1898 to 1899 so I think that is just absolutely absolutely exciting <laughs> I'm very very excited and it makes a lot of sense like Victorian women were looking at these fashion plates too and they were thinking okay how can I get my skirt to look like that and they had much more you know hoop skirts were still in living memory in the 1890s so it's not a huge jump to think that they would go back to them so it makes a lot of sense that people would have kind of branched out to hoop skirts. But in spite of all of that, we don't really know about there being hoop skirts in the 1890s. Like when you think of the 1850s and 60s, you think, oh, hoop skirts. That's not something that comes to mind when you think of the 1890s. So why is that? Why have we forgotten about that? That's something that's, I have a few theories. I don't know for sure, but for one thing, they weren't as ubiquitous in the 1890s as they were in the 50s and 60s. You, could still have a pretty fashionable silhouette without having a, a hoop skirt. So not everybody was wearing them. They weren't as common. Also, it's very likely that because we're not expecting there to be hoop skirts in the 1890s, a lot of the surviving examples of 1890s hoop skirts are mislabeled as 1850s and 1860s hoop skirts because that's when we expect hoop skirts to be from. I've also not seen really any advertisements for hoop skirts in the 1890s, so it's likely that this was something that would have been worn by like very, very fashionable people, but not necessarily by your everyday woman. So those are my theories as to why we just don't associate hoop skirts with the 1890s anymore. But in spite of that, I decided that I had to make one. And my first instinct was to make the one that's shown in the patent, the uh, hooped petticoat. But the patent really does not provide any instructions as to how this thing would go together. And I decided that it would be such a headache to try to figure out how to assemble this <laughs> darn thing that I just would rather not go through that. So I decided to go with this horseshoe shaped design. This was really popular in the 1870s and clearly by this photograph that I showed earlier, it had kind of hung on into the 1890s. So that was the one that I settled on. The first step of the assembly process was to fold a twill tape in half and to sew it up to make a boning casing. Sometimes in 19th century hoop skirts and bustles and other wire constructions, you'll see loose wires, but more often you'll see the bones encased in some sort of fabric, so I wanted to emulate that. The next step was to actually insert the boning into the boning channel that I had made. And this is not a historically accurate boning, this is just a cheap 
the plastic boning, but it was the best thing I could get on short notice. And you'll notice that I've arranged the boning so that they're curling towards each other. I wanted to make sure that they both didn't want to curl in the same way. This way, their curls are going to cancel each other out, so I won't have to deal with it wanting to curl up on me while I'm wearing it. All right, so I just measured out the waistband. So now I just need to hem the waistband and sew the um, hooks, the hook and the eye onto, onto it so I can hook it around my waist. And then I'm going to start suspending the hoops. All right, I've got the hoop skirt mock-up on my dress form, ignore all the bones on the floor, and I've got the actual real hoop skirt waistband on the dress form. So what I'm gonna do now is measure the length that these tapes need to be. They're not gonna be twine in the final one, they're gonna be actual twill tape. So I'm gonna measure these, and also I'm gonna have another one coming down the back to support the back, because this wants to droop. So I'm going to measure those and then I'm going to measure the length that the bones need to be. So I'm not sure if I did something wrong, but they're all 38 inches, so I'm just gonna make them 38 inches. Now, I'm gonna have to make cut them a little bit longer so that I have room to fold them up and hem them and stuff. So I think I'm gonna cut each tape 30, well, 39 inches. Yeah, I'm gonna cut each one 39 inches. So I'm going to do that and I hope I have enough. Okay, I should have enough. I bought 10 yards. That should be enough. So let's get a cutting. The next job was to pin the hanging tapes onto the waistband. I then set about sewing said hanging tapes to said waistband. I've stitched the vertical things to the horizontal thing with these little boxes and X's. These are not going anywhere. They're going to stay around till the end of time, which is perfect. So now it is time for me to measure out 
the hoops. Okay, wow, whoa. The light is shining right on my face and actually directly into my eyes. So this is kind of painful, but I care about you guys. So I'm just gonna suffer. So the bottom one, which is the biggest one, is 57 inches. The middle one, which is the next biggest, is 52. And then the top one, which is the smallest, is 47. So it's time to start cutting. I then proceeded to pin the bones onto the hanging tapes. And this is where I ran into my first big problem. The bones that I got just were not stiff enough. And I knew that they weren't stiff enough, so I bought uh, double the amount that I would need because I was hoping that I would be able to double them up and that would make them stiff enough. But they were still just not stiff enough. And if you look at the end of this clip, you'll see that it's just a very, very floppy construction. So I got quite frustrated and I decided that I would just be done with it for the day. And uh, I came up with a, with a solution the day after this was filmed. <sighs> So here's the thing, just using the boning that I bought made it much too floppy. It was not nearly stiff enough. So what I did was to take some of the steel boning that I used for my mock-up and that steel boning was uh, salvaged from an old hoop skirt, not like an antique one, but like a, I don't know, it was entirely polyester. So I have no idea when it was from, but it did have steel boning in it. So I took some of that boning and just put it into the boning channels that I'd already made and just kind of like added that in with the plastic boning that I already had. And it's doing the job beautifully. Look at that. And this is exactly how I want it to look at this point in time. It will no not look like this forever, don't worry. <sighs> but the problem is that the steel bones are not quite the right length. When I cut them out for the mock-up, I cut them kind of roughly using this dinky little thing. So you can see it's still kind of poking out in some places. And this thing, I called it a dinky little thing for a reason. And that is because it is not meant for cutting hoop skirt bones. It's meant for cutting electrical wire. And 
if you see the cutting edge of that, come on, focus. It's just completely chewed up and pitted. Uh, so it does not cut the uh, hoop skirt wire very well. So I had to go to Home Depot for the second time today to buy this thing, which is much more heavy duty to cut the hoop skirt wire down to size. So once I've done that, then I can get back to business, pick up where I left off, so to speak. But first I need to eat some lunch because I'm hungry. So this is what we've got now. It's all pinned together. Looks very hoopy. I'm worried it might be a little bit high off the ground. I'm afraid my skirt will kind of collapse around the bottom. But if worst comes to absolute worst, I can just kind of slice these and add some extra space to them. So I'll do that if I need to. Um, this one in the middle is extra long and you'll see why later. But what I'm gonna do now is take off this front lattice work since there's no boning in it or anything. And I'm just gonna unpin it from there and stitch this all together on the sewing machine because I don't wanna have to do it by hand. And if I assemble the whole thing first, then I won't be able to get this into the sewing machine. So I'm going to um, take this off stitch it together on the sewing machine, then pin the whole thing back on to the hoop skirt. So I did that thing where I just kind of worked and didn't get it on camera. Fortunately, it was very straightforward work. I just backstitched the hanging tapes onto the hoops. At the top, I folded the hanging tape around and just folded it up under on the back. And then I did the same on the bottom for all of them. And then for the front piece, I just, this is just a very kind of sloppy thing. I just kind of sewed the front lattice work on there. Now at this point, the hoop skirt was technically done, but it had a tendency to push out in the front, like this photograph. You can see how there's some weird unsightly stuff going on in the front of my skirt. That's because the back of my skirt is pushing the hoop skirt forward. In the 1850s especially, but also in the 1860s, the weight of the skirt was pretty evenly distributed around the body, whereas in the 1890s, most of the fabric of the skirt is gathered or pleated towards the back, which makes the back of the skirt significantly heavier than the front of the skirt. That meant that the back of the skirt wanted to push the hoop skirt forward, because um, that's also where the hoop skirt sticks out the most. So I had to find a solution for this, and I tried lots of different methods of kind of stretching one of the tapes behind my legs so it would kind of get held back into place, but that really, really limited my range of motion. I couldn't take very big steps in that. And also having a tape in front of my legs and a tape behind my legs, kind of when I walked it, they kind of worked in tandem to scooch the front of the hoop skirt up. So it eventually kind of turned like that, which was not the look I was going for. So I got some lead fishing sinkers and I decided that I was gonna sew those well, it was not my idea, it was my mother's, but I decided that I was gonna sew those onto the front of the hoop skirt to counteract the weight of the back of the skirt.
So now the hoop skirt is done. This is what it looks like with the weight. And you can see when I come over here that they are doing a very good job of pushing it backwards. And this is where this long center thing comes into place. I've sewn this little hook onto it or this little uh, loop onto it. And this hooks onto the bottom um, peg on my corset busk. And you see without it, the front just really wants to collapse because of the weight of those fishing sinkers. So if I just hook this up onto my corset busk, then that will hold the whole thing up. So that's it, the hoop skirt is done. A huge thank you to Sandra White, Mary Royal, and Kit Kat Stitch for sponsoring this channel on Patreon. If you would also like to sponsor the channel on Patreon, there is a link in the description. Please don't feel pressured. I will not be offended if you do not. There will also be a link to my Instagram if you'd like to follow me there. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notifications and comment and all that jazz. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.